Hello, and welcome to Gus McDowell Strategy and Tactics. I'm Nick McDowell, and today we're playing part four of Convoy 13, No Reply, the 10th mission in the NATO campaign in Naval War Arctic Circle. Naval War Arctic Circle is based on a hypothetical Great Arctic War sent in 2030 and fought in the North Atlantic, Arctic, Baltic, and the North Sea. The NATO campaign covers the Great Arctic War as experienced from the Northern Partnership and NATO alliances. In Convoy 13, No Reply, we must defend NATO convoys against attacks. Major reinforcements are being transported across the Atlantic to reach the operations theatre. Undoubtedly, the enemy knows that we are here. Long-range bombers, surface ships, and not the least, submarines, are a major threat to the convoys. Our objective is to defend the convoys. So far, we have shot down a barrier of airborne early warning and control aircraft, an Il-78 tanker aircraft, two Tupolev Tu-160 bombers, and four Tupolev Tu-22M3 bombers from Keflavik in occupied Iceland. We have also shot down a number of Su-35 flankers and Su-57 felons. Convoy 12 survived an ambush of five separate missile salvos of SSN-27 Club missiles, and Convoy 13 survived a torpedo attack. We engaged and destroyed two enemy submarines, the Reese and the Kugua. However, we lost the USS Texas, probably to an enemy ASW screen from a surface action group. From the last known location of the Texas, I would estimate the enemy ships are around 100 kilometers south of Keflavik. And we launched three salvos of Tomahawk land attack missiles at Keflavik Air Base in occupied Norway, 90 missiles in all. We have now detected another two Illusion Il-78 tanker aircraft. These can provide persistence to enemy fighters. Convoy 12 is to the north. It consists of the Bonham Richard, a WASP-class escort carrier, the Philippine Sea, a Ticonderoga-class guided missile cruiser, the Bulkley, an Ali Burke-class guided missile destroyer, and an oil tanker. Its combat air patrol is returning to the Bonham Richard. Let's launch another two fighters on combat air patrol. The remaining two are refueling and rearming from their patrol. Convoy 13 is the centre. It consists of the Iwo Jima, a WASP-class escort carrier, the Princeton, a Ticonderoga-class guided missile cruiser, the McCampbell, an Ali Burke-class guided missile destroyer, and a container ship. Let's launch a combat air patrol of two F-35B. Two aircraft are ready. Another two aircraft from a previous patrol are refueling and rearming. Then we have the Carrier Task Force. It consists of the Theodore Roosevelt, a Nimitz-class carrier, the San Jacinto and Lake Champlain, both Ticonderoga-class guided missile cruisers, and the Winston S. Churchill, Lassen and Howard, all Ali Burke-class guided missile destroyers. A number of fighters are returning to the Roosevelt from air superiority missions southwest of Iceland. It has launched a combat air patrol of two F-35. They are proceeding along the air threat axis between the Carrier Task Force and Keflavik Air Base in occupied Iceland. The Carrier Task Force also has an ASW screen of three Sikorsky SH-60B Seahawk helicopters. A Poseidon from Goose Bay and Labrador is moving to a patrol position off Convoy 12. It prepares to drop sonar boys in front of the convoy to detect any remaining submarines. Over at Canadian Forces Base Goose Bay and Labrador, Canada, an F-35A is on combat air patrol. To the west, an E-3 Sentry AVAX aircraft provides situational awareness.
All of a sudden, we detect the Piotr Veliki group, the enemy surface action group. It is roughly near the last known position of the USS Texas. The group consists of the Piotr Veliki, a Kirov class battle cruiser. Also, the Admiral Tabanyenko, an Udaloy II. And the Moskva, a Slava class guided missile cruiser. In real life, the Moskva was sunk in April 2022 during the Russo Ukrainian War. It was the largest Russian warship sunk in action since the Second World War. The USS Virginia is half a day sailing away at 10 knots. But the enemy surface action group is almost within range of the 12 Harpoon anti ship missiles. The Virginia adjusts course. Over at RAF Lossiemouth in northern Scotland, two Poseidon are ready to launch. They are configured for a naval strike mission profile with 11 Harpoon missiles each. Let's launch them. The Carrier Task Force has two Mariner MQ-9 UAV configured for naval strike, each with two Kongsberg Joint Strike Missiles. But their range is limited to 384 kilometers, and this may not be enough. The Carrier Task Force also has two Northrop Grumman M47B Pegasus UCAV. These have a range of 1,167 kilometers, and each carries four Kongsberg Joint Strike Missiles. Perfect. Let's launch these. Launching unmanned vehicles can achieve effects on the enemy and does not put any aircrew at risk. The enemy are out of harpoon range of our surface ships. Behind the UAV, let's launch two Boeing FA-18E Super Hornets configured for naval strike with two Harpoon missiles each. And another two. Meanwhile, we have detected two Tupolev 295 aircraft over Iceland. Let's get the helicopter to stop and deploy its dipping sonar. Let's speed up time. The Su-35 flanker has turned back in towards my fighters from Lossiemouth. I order them to intercept and engage. I momentarily lost contact with the enemy surface action group. I regained detection of the Admiral Tabanyanko. Losing contact caused the Pegasus UAV to abort their mission and return to base. I retask them to engage the enemy surface fleet. Let's readjust the ASW screen for Convoy 13.
The Su-35 flanker moves within range and the F-22 launch AMRAAM. The flanker turns and runs. Let's speed up time. The AMRAM run out of fuel. The first salvo of Tomahawk land attack missiles are nearing their target at Keflavik. The airbase probably has local ground based air defence and may have alert fighters. But the first salvo is close and has not been hit. The missiles were shielded by terrain. Their guidance system climbs them over the mountain. There is Keflavik in the distance. The first salvo of 10 missiles hits, then the second salvo. Keflavik is damaged, but not destroyed. The naval strikes are heading to the enemy surface action group. Convoy 12's combat air patrol is bingo fuel and returning home. Convoy 13's combat air patrol is also bingo fuel and returning home. And the carrier task force. These are long distances on this map. The Teddy Roosevelt launches a pair of FA-18 Super Hornets on combat air patrol. Back to Keflavik, let's monitor the remainder of the land strike.
a third salvo of Tomahawk missiles is inbound. It pops over the mountain, headed for Keflavik. And Keflavik is destroyed. Other than aircraft already airborne, the air threat has been destroyed. Let's speed up time. The naval strike is still out of range. But they run out of fuel before they get within range. Meanwhile, the Pegasus abandoned their attack and I retask them again. The Poseidon from Lossiemouth are almost within range. An F-35C in-air refueling aircraft takes position. But it too runs out of fuel and must return. Distance is killing my attacks. I have lost track of the enemy surface action group. I retask the E3 sentry from Lossiemouth closer to the action. The Teddy Roosevelt launches two Growler electronic attack aircraft. And an E-2 Hawkeye. I need to keep electronic eyes on the enemy ships. The Hawkeye takes off and heads northeast. It activates its ANAPS 145 radar. The Poseidon are reaching their patrol position, but I still have no information on the enemy ships. I decide to take a risk. The lead Poseidon activates its ANAPY-10 radar. This will find the enemy ships, but also lets them know the Poseidon are near. Ships detected and identified. Harpoons are ready. Launch! From this launch point, I can shoot the harpoons through the middle of the tanker aircraft, which may confuse the air picture for enemy surface-to-air missiles. The Poseidon turn away to a rally point to the southeast. east 
Incoming missiles detected. The enemy surface action group is launching surface-to-air missiles at the Harpoons. The Poseidon dial in a course for home. A steady stream of S-300 Grumbles and Forts rises to meet the incoming Harpoons. The fort is a variant of the S-300 Grumble, the surface-to-air naval missile SAN-2. The fort is a variant of the S-300 Grumble, the surface-to-air naval missile SAN-20, only installed on Kerov class battlecruisers. Travelling at over 7,000 km per hour, it has an impressive intercept speed. Here we see the Harpoons flying past an Aleutian Il-78 tanker aircraft. The Aleutian is silhouetted by the setting sun. The final harpoon is defeated, but the enemy expended a lot of surface-to-air missiles in the process. Let's go back to the ASW battle for a moment. The E3 Sentry changes its patrol pattern. The Combat Air Patrol for Bagoose Bay has landed. Another aircraft is ready to launch if the E3 Sentry detects a threat. We're not close enough to target the enemy surface ships with surface fires yet.
However, the Teddy Roosevelt launches more F-35C in naval stroke profile. Six aircraft in three pairs of two. Plus two F-35 in air superiority mode to attack the enemy tanker aircraft. RAF Lossiemouth also puts up a combat air patrol just in case. Now it is a waiting game. Let's speed up time. Two Super Hornets run out of fuel and crash. We have lost contact with the enemy ships again. The lead growler activates its radar. The USS Virginia adjusts course. The growlers increase altitude and detect the tankers. Then a fighter, all fueled up and nowhere to go. A pair of F-35 vector to intercept. Let's speed up time. The Poseidon moves out of the way of the coming air battle. The Hawkeye increases altitude to improve its detection capabilities. The Growlers are bingo fuel and heading home. The remainder move to attack. The Poseidon adjusts its patrol pattern in front of the carrier battle group. Two of the large aircraft contacts are identified as Tupolev 222M3 bombers. These are high priority targets as they can attack our ships. The F-35 launch AMRAAM. The second pair are also 222M3. The F-35 launch more AMRAAM, then turn for the enemy surface action group.
The first pair of 222 M3 have four AMRAM chasing them. They manoeuvre at high speed and outrun all the missiles. The second pair of 222M3 are not so lucky. Both are shot down. Let's speed up time until the next naval strike is ready. Our aircraft and missiles are operating at extreme range and fuel is an issue. New contact designates Sierra 3. The ASW screen from Convoy 12 has detected its second submarine. The detecting helicopter has expended all its torpedoes and cannot launch. A second helicopter speeds to the scene. As does the Poseidon. Earlier in this mission, Convoy 12 was attacked simultaneously from three directions. The ASW screen detected and destroyed the first submarine. This is the second. Over at Lossiemouth, it is another 12 minutes until the harpoons are loaded onto the Poseidon and the naval strike is ready to launch. Convoy 13 adjusts course to intercept the enemy surface action group. Back to the sub-hunt. The closest helicopter has no more torpedoes. Another helicopter and the Poseidon are speeding to the scene. This might be a good opportunity to use the RUM-139 vertical launched anti-submarine rockets. But no, the submarine is outside the 12 nautical mile range of the ASROC. The Mark 54 torpedoes have even shorter range. Patience then, while we wait for fresh aircraft to arrive. The Seahawk is first, speeding to the scene. It is guided in by the first helicopter, which is maintaining contact with its dipping sonar. Using its best estimate, it drops a torpedo on top of the submarine. The torpedo fails to activate and the Seahawk fires another. The submarine has increased speed. The second torpedo also misses. The Seahawk fires its third and final torpedo.
it turns back in towards the submarine. The submarine is now running fast at 65 km per hour. The submarine evades the third torpedo. The Poseidon is almost on target. It adjusts course straight over the submarine. It drops the first torpedo in front of the submarine. Then a second. The submarine turns to evade. Hit! The torpedo strikes and destroys the Gepard. This is the third enemy submarine destroyed in this mission. The Poseidon returns to its patrol area. Let's speed up time. All three convoys are converging on the enemy surface action group. The hunted are now the hunters. So far in this episode, our Tomahawk land attack missile strike destroyed Keflavik Air Base in occupied Iceland. This prevents the enemy launching additional air attacks on air aircraft and ships. We located and sank the Gepard, the third submarine, this mission. We located the Piotr Veliki group, an enemy surface action group. We've launched a number of naval strikes at extreme range, but most have been defeated by range and lack of fuel, and the remainder by enemy surface-to-air missiles. Time for the next naval strike. The Teddy Roosevelt launches the Pegasus UAV. An RAF Lossiemouth launches two Poseidon armed with 12 Harpoon missiles each. The Teddy Roosevelt launches another pair of Super Hornets. Two Growlers.
and two more naval strike aircraft. In the next episode, we need to sink at least two enemy surface combatants to enable the convoys to cross the North Atlantic safely. As always, thanks for watching. For more Naval War Arctic Circle content, check out the NATO campaign and Jersey Blockade playlists on our channel. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and donate, and stay tuned for the next episode.